New manager bounce has arrived at Carrow Road. Dean Smith's era has got off to a flying start. Two one win here over Southampton. The first Carrow Road win of the Premier League campaign. And back to back victories as well, of course, because they did finish the first career with a win at Brentford as well. That was a game of two halves. Norwich were very good in the first for Brentford and then clung on deck first. to be level at half time and Grant Hanley didn't hide from that in his post match interview either but the skipper was the man that came up with the goods in the 79th minute heading in a Billy Gilmore corner in that goal just over my shoulder there at the Barclay end to send this place pretty mad <laughs> um, perfect sort of moment really and it's Grant's 30th birthday today although he didn't want reminding of that after the game uh, and he also joked that Gilmore was supposed to be aiming for the near post. So, um, yeah, a little, uh, <laughs> a little jab at his uh, young colleague there. But it's all good, isn't it, really? That this is exactly what they needed. This is exactly why Stuart Weather and the board took the difficult decision. It doesn't mean anything yet. It's a good start. They have to build from this. They have to improve on this. They have to take the good things from that second half because, of course, Wolves will be another very difficult game. I think we can stop talking about which games are difficult and which are more winnable because we've seen in this first 12 matches, haven't we, that every single game at this level is very difficult. If you don't turn up and you're not on top of your game, you've got no chance of winning points at this level. Um, I think very rarely are you going to have an, an off day where you manage to get a draw. Uh, they are off the bottom of the Premier League table as well, thanks to the richest club in the world. Um, Saudi Arabia United, I think they're called. Uh, they are bottom thanks to a 3-3 draw with Brentford. And yeah, Norwich will have to see by the close of the weekend where they are in terms of uh, in touch of, of the final position of safety. It's still early doors, but they're now only three points from that awful derby record total. So hopefully we won't need to be talking about that again at any point this season. And it's now, as I wrote in my column this morning, it's all about this was a, a 10 game stint of uh, a 10 game run, really, through until January the 1st. There's difficult games in that run, but again, as I say, they're all difficult, so we don't need to focus on that too much at the moment. It's about them laying the building blocks for the new era under Dean Smith and Craig Shakespeare, the SAS, as I called them in my column again this morning. And to be in with a chance of survival, I think you need to be pretty close to 20 points. Having 20 points by that point would obviously be fantastic, and you'd be well in with a shout of pushing on for survival then. But if they do want to make any changes in the January transfer window, they've got to be in touch with survival at that point. So another home game next weekend here against Wolves. So they've got that opportunity to build and keep that new manager bounce. Um, but you know, back to back wins at this level, that doesn't happen very often for, for Norwich City, does it? And it all came because of a, a second half where we asked Grant Hanley about what had happened at half time, And he just said, I'm not telling you. <laughs> which I think told a lot, really. Um, he didn't want to give away the, the secrets, really. But I think Craig Shakespeare and Dean Smith will have certainly, at the very least, given them a, a great deal of motivation. I'm not sure if it would have reached hairdryer treatment or not, but uh, it worked. Whatever they did, it worked. And that second half was so, so much better. Southampton eventually looked like the team who had run out of puff, but it should be said as a come on to... But Theo Walcott missed a huge opportunity to spoil the party in the third minute of injury time when he really should have been scoring. So, you know, like I said, it's not done and dusted. Norwich aren't now just on their on the complete upward trajectory and they're going to survive. This is just the start. They've got to work so, so hard. And I think the thing you could see was Southampton in that first half is they had that confidence. They had that bit of momentum. They'd won three and drawn one of their last four games. The last of which, of course, was against Dean Smith and against Villa. Uh, they'd won 1-0 at home prior to the international break. So it's going to be incredibly interesting to see how they build from from here. Uh, the three changes were Grant Hanley did come back in. We saw he was back in training uh, during this week. Had, had that groin problem, which had kept him out of Scotland duty. But obviously he was determined to be involved. Todd Cantwell did come in. Uh, Dean Smith described that as a risk that he thought was worth taking basically because you know what Todd's capable of but he looked very rusty um, there's there's no denying that and he was taken off at half time replaced by Josh Josh Sargent on the right of uh, that 4-3-3 because Max Aarons was just getting um, totally outnumbered 
um, with Milo Ritschitz in front of him on that side. Todd was playing on, on the left in the first half and it just wasn't happening. Southampton were rampant. They were chucking bodies forward. They moved the ball so quickly and it, yeah, they could go off at halftime pretty relieved. Um, so those, uh, and Billy Gilmore as well as the third who came in, Omar Deli dropped to the bench, Lise Malou as well, and Kieran Dow missed out completely. He's had a COVID diagnosis, although he's asymptomatic as things stand. So they're just dealing with that, hoping that he's going to be okay. And then they'll get him back into training once, you know, he's re uh, returned the required negative tests and all that sort of stuff. But that, that's obviously frustrating for Dal because he, he had started the the Brentford game. We'll, we'll see if he comes back into things. Um, came from behind to win a game. That didn't happen once, I don't think, in the Daniel Farker era, did it? I think we've got to go back to the Alex Neal season to uh, for the last time that Norwich came from behind to win a game in the Premier League. Um, of course, they did it in the Championship, but... Uh, Hopefully that will sort it out. <laughs> I'll switch off the Wi-Fi because that seems to be struggling. Um, yes, the where was I? Yeah, so the, the chance of Dean Dino Dino, but he was pretty composed with it all. He stood by the tunnel and waited for all his players, shook the hands of the Southampton players and things like that, and then eventually gives round of applause to the four stands. Doesn't go round doing the sort of fuck waves or anything that like that. He was very calm, and uh, that's probably partly because. As I said, Theo Walcott could have uh, snatched the draw right at the death. Uh, in terms of ratings, I think I'll go Rashitza for Man of the Match. I wouldn't say there was really a standout today, but most of them can get sevens. Um, I'm going to go six for Gilmore, Norman and Aarons. Um, I very nearly just went sevens throughout, but for Gilmore and Aarons, that would be taking into account that they got the two assists. So Gilmore, it's a good corner for the winner. Aaron sets up Puki for the opener, but Max as I said, was just constantly being outnumbered, but probably wasn't doing enough himself as well in that first half. He did improve, with, as they all did in the second half. And Gilmore as well definitely grew into the second half. They started getting the ball into him in tight spaces, which is where he likes it, isn't he? He likes to be able to turn away from people and he trusts his technique. And he was starting to find his group. It, but I think he could have gone off at half time, just the same as Campwell as well. They both come in from the cold and they both looked really rusty. So... I'm not going to get caught, too caught up in it. The, the sponsors gave Gilmore man of the match. I definitely don't agree with that. Um, but it's a, a good step in the right direction. By the time he was replaced late on by Lucas Rupp in the 86th minute, he got a standing ovation because he was knackered by that point. You could see he'd really ran his race. And he'd been very much involved in that second half. So it was a step forward, but I didn't think him and Matt's quite hit sevens. Um, it's not like they won 4-0 today. So you, you know, you've got to have somewhere to, to, to go in terms of your ratings. And Norman, he's cut his hair off, which is obviously a, a mistake when um, when you're in form, isn't it? The um, platinum blonde or whatever it is sort of top to his hair. He's chopped that off and he's just got the dark hair now. Um, he he wasn't bad today, I wouldn't have said, but I think maybe it was the the way the two teams were set up. He j it just seemed like it was bypassing him a lot of the time. Was involved here and there, but it wasn't as good as we've seen in previous weeks. Not that I'm saying he was bad, um, but Cantwell, you've got to give him a five. I, I, don't, I don't think Todd's going to be complaining and saying, you know, oh, that's not fair. He, he just looked rusty. It comes down to that. There were two moments in the first half where the crowd got really short with him, where once when he should have been just clearing the ball, getting reared, and he tried to win a foul and then quickly realised and, and reacted and tried to win the ball back. And another one where he lost the ball on the edge of the box and Han Hanley had to bail him out of a really good block. So, yeah, uh, Todd will need some more time in the training field. He will need work with Shakespeare and Swift. They're not just going to bin him off, are they? They know what a, a good player he is and what he's capable of. But it didn't work for him today. So he's got to sort of hit restart and, and impress again in training this week, isn't he? And try and, try and force his way into things. Because Sargent came on in the second half and he didn't do anything spectacular, but he did really work. And that was the one thing we heard about him in the summer, wasn't it? That it was his work rate and his pressing. And that worked. There were a couple of occasions when he just charged back and got goal side and he was protecting errands and digging in and fighting, getting back and defending and just being selfless, really. Um, so that's not really a striker that you're talking about then, is it? And he had played in on the right quite a bit for Bremen. So we'll see how he develops. Maybe for a team battling against relegation, he could be very useful as that wide right man. He's not necessarily full of 
tricks and skills and stuff, is he? But he will work hard and he will try and press and win the ball high up the pitch. So that was what Norwich needed and it worked and he did protect Aaron. So um, he gets a seven and I'd be surprised if he wasn't starting against Wolves next week as, as well now. Um, the stats, Norwich had a 37% of possession. So again, that emphasises that the first half just did not go to plan at all. They could not get the possession game going um, and Southampton probably had wrestled it back a bit by the end as well uh, overall. Um, shots, if I'm remembering correctly, Norwich only had one shot at half-time and that of course was Pookie's goal and one shot on target as well, of course. Um, I can't remember exactly what Southampton's were, but by the close of play, Norwich had eight shots and four on target. Southampton had 17 and five on target. Five corners, seven for, for Southampton. So again, that, that paints the pitch a little bit doesn't it and Southampton end up leaving here very frustrated but it, it just felt like it was Norwich's day in the end the energy and the adrenaline it all sort of surged in a way and the atmosphere was was cracking obviously to once the second goal went in the roar then just the relief that poured around it was brilliant and it would have been such a shame if they'd have conceded that late equaliser um but it, it got off to a horrible start this place where the Southampton fans were singing um, is this a library and you're getting sacked in the morning to Dean Smith which is, I think even the home fans could appreciate was pretty good banter uh fourth minute there's a misjudgment from Hanley initially a, a poor touch from Kenny McLean he took a couple of poor early touches actually conceded one early throw which invited pressure Kenny recovered a, a lot actually and put a heck of a lot of effort into this game he was all over the pitch second half um so he shook that off but Hanley just hesitated for a second Shea Adams is in squeezes away from him and Max Aarons turns Hanley and then squeezes a low shot in off the near uh, the far post Tim Krull with no chance of that one but they were initially the first few minutes the atmosphere was so flat four minutes later Rashitza and Aaron's do well on the right. Rashitza looks like he's just put too much on the pass initially. Max manages to keep it in, dinks it to the near post. Puki reads it and nods a header past McCarthy at the near post. As you see there, he probably should have been doing better with it. But fourth goal of the season for Timo, so that's all good. Then it's just chaos. Southampton just pulverising Norwich, essentially. And, and Hanley and Gibson got through a heck of a lot of work. They made some really good blocks um, and they were very, very busy. There was those Campwell incidents that... I'd mentioned as well. And Tim Krull just before half time with a fantastic save, bailing Grant Hanley out, who had tried to sort of spin on halfway, got robbed by Diallo, who then played in Adams, who squeezed the shot past Ben Gibson. And Krull read it. It was really powerful. It was not It was fairly close to him, but it was a really strong right hand to keep it, um, uh, to push it away from his goal. So, um, yeah, as I said earlier, they were lucky to be level at half time, if you're being perfectly honest. But right from the start of the second half, you could just tell the intent was totally different. Pushing high really pressing Southampton all of the time and they just seemed to have that more intent about them that they they were just a bit more pumped they'd shaken off the sort of frustrations and things like that and perhaps Smith and Shakespeare had just managed to give them a few little more instructions here about getting further up the pitch and and where to press Southampton at the right points and it just clicked it was much much better Gilmore came into things as I said um Rashidza had a shot held in uh, the uh, 53rd minute after a nice pass by by Norman initially that was started by Rashidza Williams really came into it um second half as as well um with some real sort of bombing uh, runs and he, he did get booked for sort of a bit of handbags with Jan Bednarak which was totally unnecessary really so he probably should have uh, avoided getting involved with that but um, he, he, he is a bit of a feisty character isn't he and the um, there was a good save from Alex McCarthy f three minutes before Norwich got the uh, winner that came from a good play from Gilmore on halfway to get Pookie away who then sort of teased Salisu and managed to open up a, a gap to get a shot towards the near po post from the from the right channel McCarthy strong hands to get it around his uh, his near post because team are really connected with that one and then the big moment yes as I said at this end at the Barkley end 79th minute Rashitza wins the corner Gilmore has taken over corners by that point because Rashid's have wasted a couple early doors and swings it to the back post. And there's Grant Hanley rising like a Scottish salmon to nod it down just inside the near post from where we were sat in the press box. We weren't sure if it was in initially, um, but uh, within a split second, we soon realised because the Barkley roared and this place was going absolutely mad. And then you've got the whole stadium singing yellow and Dino and everything just rolling through it. Uh, and it just felt like a huge, huge uh, release for what has been a strange and, and difficult and sort of emotional time, hasn't it, for, for the supporters? But yeah, third minute of injury time, the big let off. James Ward Prowse, we all know what a great delivery he's got on him, what a cross it was from the right. Picked up Theo Walcott, probably not the man you want for a header at the best of times. 
just nods it down beyond the far post and Krill doesn't even have to dive really. He can watch it go safely wide. He It had landed right on his head. He didn't really have anyone challenging him. He should have equalised. So thankfully they got a little bit of luck to ensure that the Dean Smith era gets off to a great start. Thank you very much for watching. Head over to pinkin.com for all the analysis and reaction. We'll be recording the latest Pinkin podcast before we head home tonight. But for now, let us know what you thought of the game in the comments below and we'll catch you soon.